Good day, Model Railroaders. I'm getting a little excited. My renovations, uh, well, they're still working on it. I'm soon gonna have a full basement. I can start a train set again. And what I'm gonna model is when I was a kid, 19, let's say 83, 85, right up to 1989, I used to cross the St. Thomas train yard every day to go to high school. And that's pretty much when I fell in love with trains. It was Conrail in the area. And just the big blue machines loved them. I could sit and watch them all day and the yard was always busy and there are 20, 25 tracks in this yard. So you can see the old, the building behind me. It's part of the roundhouse. And oh, enough of me, I guess. We're here to see trains, right? So let's turn around. Let's see some trains. Good action. Old loading platform. Drive up there with a forklift, I guess. In there. Load the box. Now let's get a good look at the yard. Oh, I'm telling you, 20, 25 tracks here I had to cross when I was a kid. 20, 25 tracks. 20. Holy cow. It's kind of hard to. Oh. Somebody stole the yard. It's gone. We got this left. This used to be all track. The old station's still there. The old passenger station, freight station. Pretty much when I want to model my whole uh, one side of my train set, my new layout's going to be about. It's the St. Thomas Yard that I remember when I was a kid. And I guess this video here isn't going to help me out too much except for that. So, I guess if I get some pictures of the old station, I can uh, hopefully get a model done of that. And then all these tracks used to come up. Here's the old roundhouse. I'm about 100 feet from it, so we're kind of close. You see the big doors on it. It's a three or four level type of building. No track. At the end of the building. Oh, it used to be so beautiful. Like I said, it was busy every day. I bet you there's 30 trains coming through the hub of St. Thomas at one point. We had uh, one end of town, Chesapeake in Ohio. They had an old roundhouse. They had a turntable. And then uh, came up through the ravines. Two tracks. Branched off into this one. Said back in my day that was Conrail, and uh, CN had one line going straight through the, straight through it too. Yeah, right, right. Just that area, you guys can see the one track that's laid down that comes over here, but uh, there had to be 20, 20 tracks just right in there. And I'm telling you, back in my day, they were full. There was cars everywhere. So I'm going to take a walk around the building. I got an old transfer table in the back. See, uh, see how that's doing. This is just a side view of the round. I don't know why I keep calling it a roundhouse. The repair shop and stuff. It's not a roundhouse. It's straight across the front. See all the levels it's got on there. Obviously, there used to be big bay windows on there. Big access door.
1913, so that's way back in the steam days. They got this pipe that comes right to the side of the wall. I'm thinking it must have been for water, and there's another one down there. Must have been for water also. And the other thing that I'm interested in is. back here a lot either so some of the new signs and stuff they got to promote themselves show you a couple more in a minute yeah, old fire hydrant You guys get to look at the building while I get to look at the ground so I don't fall down. All in all, I think it's about 60 feet. original wood and stuff down. Tell they haven't done anything to this. I doubt they fix this one up. This would be huge, huge cost. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Really big gears. It's gonna drive gears. Must have been on a rope system. Well not a rope system but a big pulley system, chain system. And straight underneath here. And it doesn't come out that side anymore. make the hair stand up in the back of your neck. It's not a sketch, but it's a cat. I'm glad it's a cat. <laughs> hey, it's the old Conrail one. I gotta go look at that one. Back in its day, it must have been a great, great sight to see all this in action. He said over 400 people worked here at one time. It's amazing. <laughs> There's some weathering for you.
drain pipe was it behind the sign and don't come out up there added feature <laughs> Now, this part I do not remember about St. Thomas at all. But looking it up in the history books, the uh, London St. Thomas rail line was all electric. That looks like it's right in front of the old city hall. Downtown. So. From one end to the other end, it's a long building. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen stalls out the back. Make for a pretty long transfer table. Okay, guys, talking about and the last side of the uh, engine, engine facility. See how much glass was in these places. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this used to be all glass down there too. I've got it all ported up now. So. Here, this is all up and operational. There, I'll show you guys the pictures that are on this plaque here. And, uh, Home of the Elgin County Railway Museum. These buildings are the former Michigan Central Railroad locomotive shops. They were constructed over a hundred years ago as a modern facility to build, service, and repair locomotives, as well as repair freight and passenger cars when needed. The completion of the MCRR shops in 1914 placed St. Thomas among the leading railway division centers in North America and it was considered a state-of-the-art facility. At its peak the M uh, MCRR shops employed more than 400 employees. The building is one of a few remaining rail assets in the city and the Elgin County Railway Museum has called it home since 1988. In 2009, the museum was able to purchase the land and facilities and is working to preserve this important part of the St. Thomas Railway heritage. Please come in and explore the railway treasures within these walls. Guided tours are available for a small admission fee during operation hours. And I believe it was like five bucks. On one of my other videos, I did uh, take some of the pictures of the stuff inside but uh, not too many so I don't know if that's their website or I guess I'll have to check it out
So I think to get an overall basic length of the building, what I'm going to do is just go for a walk, pointing the camera in that direction. And that should give us how many windows and doors. Kind of general spacing in between them. Walk and shoot a video at the same time. This is always good, right? Good part about this is I am walking on asphalt, so unless I step in a puddle, I should be all right. Oh, be a little view above the arches there. Okay, go back for a walk again. All the drain pipes, they go all the way up to the top. I think the pillars in the uh, front there are supposed to represent uh, horse latches or whatever they're called. Since the building's so old. Missed something there. There's that one back there on the roof. And above that door. Not sure if this awning was part of the actual building or if they just put this on there because now there's kind of a wedding bouquet in there. So this archway is actually all glassed off. Big doors on the front of it. The archway. Walkway. Trying to get rid of the cars. It's not a very wide building, but it does make up for it in length. And there's the last one. There's three of those on top. One, two, three. train station, St. Thomas, Canada Southern Railway Station, St. Thomas, Canada Southern, Casio Station, financed by American Railway promoters, was constructed between 1871 and 1873 to serve both as a passenger station for St. Thomas and Casio's corporate headquarters. During the 1920s, the station was one of the busiest in Canada. Canada Southern Rail Route through southwestern Ontario, ultimately linked Chicago and New York City, and was instrumental in the economic development and growth of St. Thomas. Designed in the, I have no idea what that word is, Italian, style by Canadian architect Hector Berryman. The impressive building was embellished with classic details such as pilasters, pilasters, I don't know, you guys will have to zoom in and read that, arched windows and passenger ways, wide eaves and a heavy cornice support by paired brackets. 
the building's design, scale, and quality of interior finishings makes it unique within the Canadian architectural history and it stands as a symbol of the importance of the railway development in southern Ontario. And then uh, you can see the old archways of the doors. How much detail was put on the doors. Drain pipes go all the way up. Being over a hundred years old, the bricks are doing pretty good. They uh, last time I was here, this wasn't in. It was way down there. They had that finished up. So they've been doing quite a bit of work on it, and you can still look in the windows. Some of the old systems they had. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Maybe I gotta stand in front of it. Old cash machine, old typewriter. I don't think the chair is 100 years old, but hey, I could be wrong. Even the detail inside, you can see the door over there. Old pillar going up. Hopefully you guys can see all that stuff anyway. Well, Model Railroaders there, that has it. The uh, trip down memory lane for me when I was back in high school. I'm in my 40s now, so it's been a few years. Uh, new layout, what I want to do is the old train station in St. Thomas. So I'm going to make this video up. Hopefully some of you guys like it, but I myself am going to try to use it as a reference video. Hold the camera a little straight, crooked, I don't know what I'm doing. So, uh, passenger station, walk around the uh, engine shed or facility where they did a lot of the uh, repairs, buildings, and the, oh, I'm going to shoot myself. I told you guys at the beginning, or at the end, I don't know when I'm going to do it. The uh, switching house, whatever it is, thing. Duh. Mine's gone. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And let's see if I can actually do this on part of my layout. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.